What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from St. Lucia Island. We're going to show you the best things to do. Let's do it. That's right everybody. We're coming to you from one of the most romantic islands in the world with 25 things for you to do in St. Lucia. Let's get into it. Here we are now at Pigeon Island. Pigeon Island is a 44 acre islet. It's actually not necessarily an island located on the northern part of St. Lucia. There is a rich history here with the Fort Rodney located right next to Rodney Bay, which is one of the main areas you will be around while in St. Lucia. So Pigeon Island, you can walk up to the fort, you can walk up to the top of the hill and get great viewpoints, 360 degrees looking north northwest and southeast so very beautiful up here in the pigeon island area the ticket cost is ten dollars us i would expect to spend around an hour to two hours here definitely better in the evening time or the morning because in the afternoon it's very hot if you look down you will see the sandals resort here on saint lucia so it's easy for you to come over here if you're staying at that hotel it's walking distance all right so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to head to the southern part of the island and show you some other places if you look right behind me here, we have Loray. Loray is a beautiful beach village just south of Marigot. You'll notice a lot of French names here, even though this is a British territory. More on that later. In Canaries, a town you can see right here, beautiful. I got a hematite necklace here, locally crafted from Johnny. We're going to show you Johnny's artwork, and you guys can stop and see him when you're in town. Nice guy. But look at this beautiful viewpoint right here at the Canaries. Yeah, so this is Johnny. He's going to show us what he's got here. What are those, Johnny? Necklaces, hematite, and it's from the forest. This is the one I got. Yeah. Hematite's good because it, what is hematite good for? It protects you against... It's protects because it's from the volcanic rock. For, from the volcanic rock. Yeah. Come see Johnny when you're in town. Okay. What is that, Johnny? Well, this is the tree at the back of you. Oh, what does it do? So if you play music, you just use this to play your music. So now we're going to have lunch at the Beacon Restaurant. You can see the pitons right behind me. Yeah, so after about a two and a half hour drive down here, I decided I wanted some lunch and thankfully they had a buffet at the Beacon Restaurant. All right, so we've got lots of local cuisine here. We've got fish fingers, chicken, rice, pink beans. Here we are now at Soufre Beach. Soufre actually is a French word for sulfur because there is a volcano nearby. Now Soufre was originally the capital of St. Lucia, but there was a big fire so they had to move it and they have since rebuilt it, but nowadays it's known for its beautiful views of the Pitons. They do have the beach here, Soufre Beach. So it is worth a stop here. Maybe even consider getting your hotel nearby this location because it's economical and still great views. And this is what it looked like in the morning when I woke up at my hotel. This is the Still Beach Resort. I stayed here one night and this was my morning. Beautiful, you can see. From here, they offer several different tours, one of which being a tour out to the Marine Biodiversity Park, which could be fun for those of you who want to get some water activities done. For me, I considered Soufre to be the heart and soul of St. Lucia, especially since it's close to the Pitons. There's a lot going on here. And it's not too overwhelming, which is really nice. There are two airports on the island, one in Viewfort, and that's about an hour and a half away. And then there's one in Casteres, which is around two and a half hours away. Yeah. Breaker's haircut here in Sofre. It's the blue building. And if you look right behind me there, there's Sugar Beach. And for those of you looking to do some honeymoon activity with a little bit more budget and 
deeper pockets, Sugar Beach is going to be exactly where you want to be. There's maybe a few other resorts, Jade Mountain and Ladera, that are going to compete with this, but Sugar Beach is really the best beach on the island, and you can see why when you're here, because look at the views. It sits right in between both pitons. Now, even if you're not staying at the resort at Sugar Beach, you can still actually park your car up the top of the hill and then walk down. That hike probably takes around 20 minutes going down and 25 minutes going up. Uh, if you're lucky, you can get a golf cart going up or down. But yeah, that's how I was able to get down here. I parked my car. Beautiful beach, beautiful water, beautiful views. And if you are going to come down here, you might as well plan to stay for about an hour to two hours. It's not worth it to spend any less time here. Maybe even consider doing some activities and probably renting one of those cabanas if you want to chill out on the beach. Now here we are at Diamond Waterfall and Botanical Gardens. There's many different waterfalls on St. Lucia. This one just so happens to be in Soufre, so it's easily accessible. You can get there probably within 10 minutes. And it's a nice botanical garden to walk around right next to the volcano. They do have a little hot spring area here, although it wasn't full when I was there. But and right behind me here, we have the Diamond Waterfall. It's like a rainforest back here, so the amount of flora and fauna they have is quite impressive. And it's a lot cooler in this little area here than it is down on the beach. And here's a look at those hot ponds that they have in those pools. And I guess they drain it every day and then they refill it just to keep it clean. And here's a look at some of the stuff they have in here. They have the cocoa, they also have nutmeg, and a variety of different other spices and herbs that you'll see around here. So expect a variety of interesting but pleasant smells. Participating in the sulfur bath. So this here is actually Sulphur Springs Park. It's an interpretation center, but they also have the volcano. And as you can see, I'm right here doing the sulfur bath. It's like a mud bath and it exfoliates the skin and the hot water uh, all goes hand in hand. If you've never been to a volcano and experienced hot springs or done a sulfur bath, this might be a good time to start. It is $11 for adults and $5 for kids to enter. They bring that sulfur mud down in a bucket and then you just stick your hand in the bucket and rub it on yourself and then you get in the actual hot pond and it all just kind of washes away after about five minutes. And after swimming down there, I ended up going up to the volcano. They say it's better to go in the morning time because it's not as busy. So take notes of that. The volcano is about a five minute walk away from the sulfur spring, so it's not bad. And it is included in your admission price to the Springs Park. So you get two for one here. Uh, it is a small area to walk around. It's more of a geological uh, unique site to explore, but you can also get a guide. And like I said, I mean, you're just going to see a cool uh, volcano caldera that is essentially waiting to erupt because apparently it's overdue. Well, we're on the Tet Paul viewpoint here. For those of you who want to get a good hike in, this Tet Paul hike really does give you a great cardiovascular exercise going up. And then when you get to the top, you're going to be honored with some very beautiful views, as you can see. The hike going up seemed to take about 30 minutes. Going down took me about 15 minutes. For me, this is a must do if you're in good shape. Coconut man. Mm. Viewfort is on the southernmost point of the island and I'm not going to necessarily say that you have to spend too much time here but it's probably worth checking out the surrounding areas and I'll show you around here a bit. This here is the Cape Moulet uh, lighthouse. It's a great viewpoint all the way down at the southern tip of St. Lucia. So if you come up here 
you're gonna get great views. Not too much else going on up here other than just a viewpoint, but it could be worth it for those of you who want these spectacular views. I actually uh, liked it because it was free. It didn't cost me anything but the gas that it took to get up here. And here we are looking down at Sables Beach. This is now looking towards the east side of the island. And after getting great views from above, I was like, you know, I need to go down there and see what's up with this beach. And sure enough, we did. Down here I saw a guy doing some windsurfing, which made total sense because it was very breezy. Also saw people doing barbecues and just hanging out on the beach. Seems like a place to relax, but not necessarily swim. Although the sand is white, there's also a bit of sargassium or seaweed that comes ashore. So it is what it is. The, the south and the east side are not known for its beaches. But Here we are now at Latiel Falls. Oh, we made it. And there's even more down here. Hey, I need to, are you taking a picture? You, you ain't playing around. Here. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> Yo, I don't think this, uh, they never, this been on YouTube. No, dude. And then you could put your feet in the water and these fish come up and eat the dead skin off your feet. I'm not so sure how I feel about it, but uh, I did it anyway for about five minutes. So I actually ended up getting some coconut oil here for $5, great price. So Mr. Roz. So here in St. Lucia, you're gonna get a lot of sun, right? And so you're gonna need some sort of after sun care. And that's where the coconut oil comes in. And what I do is I put it on my face for sure. You gotta clean your face before you apply it because you wanna be able to let it get into your skin without any sort of block on it. But I put it in my beard, put it in my hair. Also, you know, if your arms are sunburned, it's gonna help you tan too, but this is like straight from St. Lucia coconut oil. So, totally organic. That's what I like about it. If you look behind me here, we have the Dennery Viewpoint. It's Dennery Town down there. They got a nice church. I would say there's a few towns on the east side that you may consider stopping at, but Dennery probably seemed like the one that was the best. They have that nice church, they have the viewpoint, they have some restaurants and cafes that you can hang out at while you get these views. But I mean, just exploring the east side of the island, it feels more relaxed than the other side. And it seemed like cruise ships were always in the Casteris area. This here is a look at the Virgin Voyages, but there's different cruise ships that come in and out of this port here. So. Maybe taking a cruise to St. Lucia and hitting up some other islands along the way. By the way, Casteris is the capital of St. Lucia, but the biggest airport is in Viewfort. The airport here is a bit small and can only really hold island hopper, puddle jumper, small planes. Now here we are at Reduit Beach. Reduit Beach is very peaceful and relaxing up here in Rodney Bay, and I did stay here for two nights, so very nice area. Great place to catch a sunset, probably the second best place on the island to catch a sunset, number one obviously being down by the Pitons, but 
This is a great area to get that sunset views. This is a look at the Hilton by Curio uh, Harborfront Hotel. Here at the Rodney Bay Marina or Gross Islet. And like I was saying earlier, this was also a shared French as well as British island at times, kind of flip-flop being back and forth. But nowadays it is a British territory that is seeking its own independence. And after watching the sunset go down, I'm gonna actually tell you about some more things to do in the Rodney Bay area. So they do have a party street uh, that goes off on the weekends or should I say Friday nights. But yeah, you can check that out now. And this is in the main town. Here we are at the Rodney Bay Marina here in the north side. They have a variety of different restaurants here at the Rodney Bay Marina, but one of the things you'll notice is a lot of the people that are eating here, they're from those ships that are in the harbor and in the marina. So a lot of people who cruise around the Caribbean make a pit stop right here in Rodney Bay Marina. And those are the people you'll see hanging out here. And check out that moonrise right there. Really special, huh? All right, so let's talk about the arrival process into St. Lucia. You do need to fill out a form that can be done online. It's an e-form, just type in St. Lucia e-arrival form and you'll have it. Uh, it is pretty self-explanatory. You just need a passport and it's visa on arrival. Depending on where you're coming from though, that could vary, but if you're coming from Canada, the United States, Britain, that's what it's gonna be, visa on arrival. And when it comes to the currency here, they use the EC, which is the Eastern Caribbean dollar. A few of these countries in the West Indies actually use this. Barbados does not. But the EC, uh, around 2.67 uh, EC equals one US dollar. So for example, 30 EC is around uh, 12 US, just to give you an idea. But it varies, you know, currency valuations go up and down with time. All right, now when it comes to transportation, I did get a rental car, although the people who have driven on this island don't really recommend driving on the island because it's steep hills uh, going down and up, especially around the Pitons. Um, the roads are a bit tight, some hairpin turns, although I drive on the right side of the road in the United States. Here I drive on the left side of the road with the steering wheel on the other side. If you're not used to that, that may be a factor. I've gotten used to it by now, but uh, if it's your first time doing that, you might get uh, on the wrong side of the road at times, it can happen. So maybe if you haven't done that before, St. Lucia might not be for you, but if you're filling up for the task, rental car is definitely the best way to see the island. Although there are plenty of uh, taxis and shuttles and tours that you can get on to get around the island. And getting a local guide is always recommended. Anytime you can get a part of a tour for that, especially around the Pitons, you're gonna get a better experience anyway. Right, let's talk about safety. So I was told when I was down by Viewport, uh, in between Viewport and the Pitons, not to really talk to anyone who was trying to stop me for the car, because I did pick up a few hitchhikers while here driving the uh, <laughs> rental car. Mostly ladies, they were church ladies, so I know that they were good to go, but one of them, when she got out of the car, she said, hey, listen, when you're going down to Viewport, don't stop for anyone. And that was the only time that I actually heard anything about danger. Although people did say, you have to be a bit cautious on the island at times in some areas. But for the most part, it was safe, people are friendly. Just in some areas, uh, they said to watch out. And that was mostly just set down by Viewport only. Um, I'm sure there's other places that might be hairy, but you'll be all right. Uh, especially if you're um, sticking to general rules a safe island i mean you're not gonna like have any real issues it's just that was something to keep in mind and you can also watch our barbados or martinique video next <laughs> 